The views expressed are solely those of the speaker and not necessarily those of Paltalk.com, AVM software, or its advertisers. News Talk is online. News Talk Online is a production of Paltalk.com, the largest multimedia interactive program on the Internet with more than 4 million unique users, on demand on iTunes, on demand on YouTube, and uh, also on uh, my blog, GaryBaumgarten.com, where you are encouraged to post your comments, whether uh, you agree with yours truly or not, no retribution. And thanks to our good friends at CRN Digital Talk Radio, we're syndicated to an additional 12 million households. I am your host, Gary Baumgarten. And that was your cue, Boaz, to play us some music. The American dream has become a nightmare. Signs of the time are on cardboard on corners in town. Like a cancer that silently spreads, there's an unspoken fear. We're on our way down. We must take America back Main Street to Wall Street Cities and states Washington, D. Well, back in 1992, Grammy-nominated singer and composer Steve Vouse's song We Must Take America Back was released by RCA. But then, in spite of its instant popularity among listeners, it was climbing the Billboard charts. It was pulled after some radio stations complained of its patriotic lyrics. Well, now, 17 years later, Voss has re-released the recording with updated lyrics, but this time he's learned from the experience and he is distributing it himself on his site, www.stevevoss, that's S-T-E-V-E-V-A-U-S dot com. Steve Voss joins us now on News Talk Online on Peltalk.com. Steve, welcome to the show. Thanks, Gary. Well, thank you very much uh, for joining us. Tell us what motivated you nearly two decades ago to initially write this song, We Must Take America Back. Back when I was about nine years old, no, I thought I, <laughs> thought I could get away with that. You know, I was frustrated. 1992, we were having issues out here in Southern California with people running across the borders and riots in Los Angeles and you know, all that kind of stuff, and it just more and more drove me crazy. We had the, the house check uh, kiting scandal, uh, all those kind of things, and I was like, wait a minute, this is not the way America is supposed to be. And I wrote a song just to vent as much as anything else, and as it turned out, it got played for some record executives, and they loved it and wanted to put it out right away. And I thought, well, golly, well, that's great. Uh, but, boy, it turned into a twisted trail from there. So RCA grabbed it, a major label back in the day, and they put it out there, and it got instant success. It just resonated right off the bat uh, with the American public. You know, within days after its release, it was the most requested song at country radio stations in the nation. Uh, it was just rocketing up the billboard charts. Uh, it was going crazy. They brushed me out on tour, and it, it was clearly headed for the top ten, if not the top five or number one. But then, you know, radio works in a strange way. They typically start a song on, on smaller market stations, you know, in the heartland, and they, they build it up and make a case so then they can go to the big city stations in New York or Chicago or Los Angeles and say, hey, look, people love this. Here's how it's tracking and all that stuff. Well, in this case, that's exactly what they did, and normally then those stations would add the song to their playlist, but there was a consortium of stations then advised by just two or three program directors, and they said, and I'm practically quoting verbatim, we don't care where it is on the charts, we don't care how many copies are selling, we don't care how many requests we get for it, 
we're not going to play with play it because we don't agree with it. And that was the end. Well, that's the kind of censorship uh, that is uh, clearly un-American and probably uh, would have, uh, had you seen that happen to somebody else, uh, contributed to the lyrics of the original song. Uh, because, uh, for example, on this show, uh, we hear uh, very divergent points of view. There are going to be people, I'm sure, who will call in who will agree with your uh, political uh, philosophy and perspective, and there will be those who disagree, and that's fine. That's what America is really supposed to be all about. It must have been a shock to your system to cut this record, to find that RCA liked it enough to distribute it, to see it just go flying up the charts, for them to say, hey, buddy, you're going out on tour. You had to change your entire life to do this, living your dream, and then to have the rug pulled out from under your feet. It was a frightening experience. It, it truly was, a and especially maddening because, you know, RCA, I, I might have made a mistake in some regards by going on TV afterwards and talking about it. RCA got thousands of phone calls protesting their decision to drop me, and so they got a little bit vindictive, and they said, okay, look, you can't, uh, you know, they decided to hold me to the letter of the contract. They wouldn't allow me to re-release the song on my own. They wouldn't allow me to re-record it for five years, and that essentially ended any shot that I had. It was so. Then here we are, 17 years later, uh, the five-year admonition long gone. Perhaps uh, took the wind out of your creative sails, uh, but now something happened, uh, Steve Voss, to uh, convince you to re-record it with new lyrics. What was that? You know. I came into this new year trying to think positively about where we were headed. Uh, but frankly, uh, I'm more disgusted and frightened uh, now than I've ever been in my adult life about the political situation and the future for the country. And, you know, somebody, when I was on a, another program this morning, said, well, hey, I bet you wouldn't have written this if, you know, McCain had been elected. And this has nothing to do with Republican Democrat. I'm disgusted with all the scoundrels in Washington who have drifted so far from what I believe was the intent of the founders of this country. You know, I, my attitude at this point is throw all the bums out and let's start fresh. We know, Steve Voss, uh, you're not alone in that. I'll tell you something. Um, I've been on Pal Talk today drumming up a little uh, support for people uh, to come. Uh, to the show, and there was a fella who said to me, I'm going to be there. And this guy is uh, far to the left politically. And I said, oh, well, if you want to come and uh, challenge the guest, please uh, feel free to do that. And he says, I'm not going to challenge him. He says, I believe in what Steve Voss has to say. And it dawned on me as I listened to how people in the streets of the United States of America, in the mainland of the